Good afternoon, everyone. It's just at noon. Uh, we have some folks uh, already on. So I just do my welcome really quick. And Austin, I'm going to pass it over to you. If you like, we can wait a little bit more. Uh, nope. go, go ahead. We want to respect those folks who, who, who joined us timely. All right. No worries. So everybody, uh, thanks for joining. Uh, this is our uh, HCC, uh, Business Resiliency Webinar Series. This is the seventh one with Austin Tanet, who is our Entrepreneur in Residence at Houston Community College. Uh, I am Ravi Brambat. I am the Director for Student Innovation and Entrepreneurship for HCC District. And we are uh, very thankful for Austin for, you know, uh, making his uh, time, experience available to us and helping us be resilient during this uh, COVID-19 situation. So Austin, I wanna pass it on to you and just thank you for kicking us off. Uh, please do let us know how you want us to handle the Q&A uh, uh, for this session. And also uh, the session is being recorded. It will be shared uh, on our website, which I'll put in the chat uh, later on. But with that, Austin, I wanna hand it off to you. Thank you so much. Robbie, thank you so much, and i got to tell you and the audience, it's been a pleasure working with you over the last several weeks as we, as we pulled this, uh, this series together. I thought it's been uh, extremely helpful. It's given me cause to think about how we can continue to help our uh, small business uh, owners in, here in the greater Houston area and along their journey to uh, entrepreneurship. So uh, let me just go ahead and jump in here. And... Um, as Robbie, Robbie mentioned, uh, I'm Austin Tanet. I'm in, in addition to my work at HCC uh, as an entrepreneur in residence, I'm also a, a do a little business plan coaching uh, over there as well. Uh, in fact, we just wrapped up the final uh, workshop for the business plan competition, and I got to tell you, these entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs are a very resilient bunch. So the expectation is that they would all participate in six or seven different uh, workshops to be eligible for the uh, for the prize money, and uh, I will tell you, uh, two days ago, there was one of our candidates, our, our participants. She she called into the webinar from her hospital bed, and there was another gentleman yesterday who had had surgery in the morning, and he still found a way to call in later in the day. So I mean, I think it's just that's such a great testament to about the. Uh, the, the zealousness of, of entrepreneurship. Uh, in my corporate life, I was uh, ran a big strategy function, ran a large team of 1,700 people in a business unit leadership role, and then uh, the last several years of my uh, corporate career, I was in uh, uh, business development and sales. Okay, so uh, the goal for today is uh, we've again this is our seventh session, and uh, my promise to those who have been on the call earlier, is to got, bring it all together and put, uh, put, a, put a nice bow on uh, what we've, uh, the six topics or six sessions we've covered here previously. And then I'd also like to use this time as just some parting words, some parting comments, and some, uh, some encouragement to uh, go out into your community and make some stuff happen with your business. So that's kind of my goal. So if, if you know, for, for those of you on the, um, on the, uh, in the audience, if you'd be so kind as maybe uh, plug into the chat room, 
maybe maybe what uh, your goal is for uh, attending today. Uh, I know because of where we are with the pandemic, we have lots of choices as it relates to webinars and other things to do with our time. But I'd be very interested to hear what uh, what's top of mind for our our visitors. So then make sure that I'm responsive to that as well. So uh, with saying that, what I thought we would do is spend a few minutes and just kind of talk about the journey so far, kind of where we've been, some of the topics we've covered, and that sort of thing. So it's been quite exciting. We've had some really good dialogue with the people that have dialed in around what they're trying to achieve and, and comments and things that they're seeing. So uh, I have no, uh, I have every expectation that today's audience will be just as interactive. So where have we been? So our, our, our number one or our first um, session and Ravi, it seems like it's more like five or six months ago as opposed to seven weeks ago, but I guess time flies when you're having a blast. But anyway, we talked about uh, mindset, and uh, the, particularly in a time like this when we're facing this pandemic, you know, the same old thinking is going to produce the same old results. So how do we sort of unclog our brain? So if we think about what the problem is or problem continues to be, you know, so many owners or business owners are they're confused, lost, perplexed, disoriented, bewildered, so on and so forth. So I'll give you, a, I'll just give you a, a, a little anecdote that came up just early this week. I was talking with another colleague of mine who, uh, who also advises businesses. He works for one of the government entities, and that's his deal. He, he works, uh, he, he advises uh, businesses on, on different things, growth strategies, startup strategies, so on and so forth. So I called him. I said, wow. I said, I bet you're really, really busy right now with all that's going on over here the last few weeks. And he said, Austin, You'd be surprised," he says. "In fact, I've I've never been, you know, kind of this unbusy. Um, I've resorted to calling out to my clients and perspectives and that sort of thing. And I understand uh, we kind of do sort of the same thing, but the difference, the big difference is what he does is free. Your your tax dollars pay for for his services. But he says, you know, in spite of that, he says often nobody's calling. He says I've had to do outreach." He says, uh, the, and, and the outreach that I do do, most of the questions are around uh, the PPP or the CARES Act and people getting their money f from the stimulus programs and that sort of thing. And I said, you got to be kidding me. Somebody's got to be asking about, hey, what should I be thinking about as we come out of the pandemic? How do I maybe pivot my business? What should I be thinking about doing differently? He said, absolutely not. He said, that is not the case. So, um, and so, and, and I have to agree with him. I've, I've seen a lot of that with prospective clients of mine maybe even a few clients of mine, that uh, there's, uh, there's uh, this kind of waiting that's, that's going on for, for something to be better. So as we talk about mindset, think of yourself as the entrepreneur, the business owner. Think of yourself as that strong uh, uh, bicycle rider. You know, you know, let's think champion level because that's what, that's what business owners are. We're champions. You know, we've we've uh, stepped away from the 9 to 5 to go craft our own um, way forward. But what we're seeing right now, if you think about it, uh, with the pandemic, uh, we're, we're, not, we're all riding weak bikes, right? The weak bike is caused by, again, the, the, the hits to, to the system. So whether you're a Tour de France winner or whether you're um, maybe a guy who's, who's not been off the couch in five years, um, you guys, if, you, if you're both riding that tricycle or that weak bike, you can give each other a run for your respective money. So the whole, the whole idea, or what we're trying to do here, is to, again, through this series and this particular workshop, is how do we build a bigger, a better bike? And so the five key principles that we covered in, um, in session, session one was uh, our ability as entrepreneurs, as business owners, as, as leaders, is to, that ability to embrace change. And with that, uh, wearing the key three, three key hats, every entrepreneur wears three hats, one of the uh, technician, one of the manager, and most importantly, the one as the entrepreneur or the visionary for the firm. So the key there is how do you determine what your area of awesomeness is, meaning what is it that you do that nobody else can do, and then how do we get you focused on spending most of your time there? Obviously, in times like this, great attitudes, uh, I, pardon the pun, but great attitudes can be viral, uh, positive virus, and can um, uh, resonate through your organization. I tell people I am a consummate half full glass kind of guy, and uh, uh, and I think it rubs off on people when I talk to them, uh, particularly clients. 
And um, even when I look in the mirror in the morning, just knowing that you continue to have that great attitude, you know, when things aren't going as planned, because I, I assure you, uh, n- uh, nobody that I know of had planned for such a, a, a terrible situation as this pandemic. But, again, I think there's going to be some great opportunities for people. So also in that mindset category, we talked about goals, not just how to set goals, but the seven steps on how to achieve them. Because goal setting is easy. The, the achievement part is where the true challenge comes from. Then we talked about a tool called Mindstorming, and this is, uh, can be done individually or and probably best done in concert with your colleagues. But to just sort of, you know, uh, it's, it's an extreme form of brainstorming to generate ideas, concepts, the, uh, the way forward for, for your particular enterprise. Because I think that's what's really important. Since we don't know what's going on, we, we ha- nobody has a great view of what the future is going to bring, so this is our time to, to create the future. In session two, we talked about customers. And, um, I th- again, going back to what's going on, uh, on in the business place, there have been so many business owners, hopefully this has been corrected now, but there's been so many business owners who haven't done some basic outreach to their existing set of customers. And I get it, right? So as soon as, and this, and this happened to me as well, the, the, the current customer landscape is a, is a little bare. You know, if we had, for those of us who are currently in business, I'm sure you probably had a few of your uh, clients, maybe some of your better clients, have either rolled off or they've hit the, the pause button. If you had anything in sort of the, your uh, your pipeline or, or clients that were starting to do business with you, they've probably gone, gone away as well. But I'm convinced, and we're always convinced, that when done well, we can have more customers than, than we can handle. And then we, and in this section, we touched on some of those key things. So when we talk customers, it's not just the external customer, that individual, that person, that company that pays the bills, pays our invoices, but it's also the, our, our internal cus, customers. You know, those folks that uh, you know sit, uh, you know, one cubicle over. Well, I guess I can't say one cubicle over in the days of COVID, but uh, they're the, uh, the your colleagues that are on those Zoom meetings with you two or three times a week. But they uh, obviously are, should be uh, great partners with you in servicing your customer base. Obviously, there's competition, and there's, there will always be competition, whether it's direct competition or functional competition, right? Uh, there will always be that. But the opportunity there is how do we change our dialogue so that we don't sound like all the other guys in our, in our market space. This is a great time. We talk about the good, the bad, and ugly as it relates to our customers. This is a wonderful time to prune your, uh, your, your, your client base. There's those customers, good customers, the ones that you want to keep forever. There's a, there's a bunch that are probably bad ones that are probably sitting on the fence. And then there's the ugly, right, <laughs> the, the ones that uh, we don't like to work with. They, they don't particularly care for us. Uh, we don't like them. They make our life difficult, so on and so forth. So uh, this now's the time to really evaluate who you're doing business with. And then there's, uh, we talked about the ideal customer. And if you want to eliminate some level of frustration from your business, really get focused on who your ideal customer is. And as a, just as a, as a coaching tip, I would, I would assert that you should have no more than four types of different profiles for your customer. Because uh, as we say in, the, in, the, in that last slide there, learn their thoughts. So, the way that you can be valuable to your ideal customer is to understand how uh, to understand how you think. As your competition sort of moves after every, uh, oh, pardon me, pursues everything that moves, you're going to be the more focused a competitor in the space because you've taken the time, made the investment to really understand, deeply understand what's on the on mind of your clients and um, and how you can best serve them. Hey Riley, I'm going to take one second here. We got something into the into the um, into, into the chat room. Uh, the question is: is you know why would we be sh- you know shedding or getting rid of getting getting rid of customers at, at a time like this? Uh, first of all, great question, and um, and maybe it wasn't obvious, but the, the but as, as I've talked to enough of my customers and prospective customers and before and after workshops I've given over the last few weeks, uh, bad customers or ugly customers. Are the, like I said earlier, are those that um, you know they, they take up more than your more time than they're worth because they're probably beating you down on price. 
They don't understand the value that you bring to the particular marketplace or what you're delivering to them. They're often sort of mis the miserable ones to work with. Nobody, I mean, you don't want to serve them. People on your team don't want to serve them. So my, uh, my uh, summary, my thought is why, we, why, do we, why do we even deal with these people? For those few dollars that we might be working, uh, they may be paying us, and more than likely they're, pr they're probably unprofitable at that. Um, let them go away, show them a different way to be served, and you can take that time, effort, investment, and focus it on, on folks who do get to, uh, your value. So thanks for that question. I appreciate it. And then in our session number three, we talked about uh, restarting the revenue engine. So this is kind of a, a little bit of a, a, a piggyback on, on the, uh, the previous session when we talked about customers. Um, I think uh, not all. But many, many businesses, their, their respective uh, revenue engines stalled as a result of the pa pa pandemic for a variety of reasons. Uh, maybe their uh, storefront was uh, required to be closed, or their customer base maybe just panicked and said, yeah, n nothing's happening. As I was sharing on a, a, a workshop yesterday, um, you know, the, the tank of gas that I've had in my car it's lasted me about four weeks, and um, I, I also share. You know, this is probably one of the few times where I wish I could be buying gas because uh, when we, last time I was at a gas station, it was down to dollar thirty-five a gallon, which was, I just thought, wow, I, I could I could drive back home to California and back for you know forty or fifty bucks, and it'd be it'd be a great time. But uh, but but again, uh, you know, restarting the revenue engine, it's uh, it's it's going to be it's going to be a little tricky. So why are we frustrated with that sales process? It's because we, for, for those of us who haven't done our homework, who haven't figured out who our ideal customer is or should be and how we reach them, you know, they're waiting by the, ostensibly wait, waiting by the phone, and in, anybody who shows up or rings the phone or, or, or drops an email or rings our doorbell, they look like a good customer. And kind of going back to what we said in the last section, the ability to um, – Work exclusively with people who understand our value. It's going to it's going to make you a happier business owner, and, and it, not just happy. It's going to make you more profitable, a business owner, because you're going to spend. It's going to take less time to serve that client, and at the same time, you'll you'll be getting more uh, more joy and satisfaction out of it. So, how do we get there? The big idea here is to change our or add to. Our sales process, our our approach. Um, how would you guys feel if you went into your doctor, you, you you did a little cough, and all of a sudden they're they're prescribing you medicine? You 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 turn and run the the other way. What does a doctor do? What does any good healthcare professional do? They take time to ask you about what's going on, how long you've had this particular condition, how you know does it keep you awake at night? You know when does it hurt? How does it hurt? Where does it hurt? so on and so forth. And it's through that diagnosis that they're able to come to a, um, uh, an answer or at least a, a, a hypothesis of what's ailing you and how they might be a, a, a resource to you, whether it be through uh, prescription, some therapy, or, or, or some combination. But for many folks who don't understand, you know, what a good high-quality professional sales process looks like, it's, um, you know, they're asking people to buy way before they've done a proper diagnosis. So if you want to sound different from all the other folks that are in your space, uh, get really good at the professional diagnosis, or more specifically, um, building high-quality questions. So in this section, we, co we cover the five principles uh, of sales. Now, I will share with you, I've been in the sales game probably 15 years or so, and then one thing I will share with you is that um, this is kind of an, would be sort of sales 101 because there's a lot of more advanced topics. But I'm telling you, if you could just master some of these basics here, it'll it'll put you so far ahead of uh, what your competitors are doing. So we talked about again the simplicity of the sales of sales. We use the sales staircase as a way to describe um, or, or explain our uh, sales process because if you think about it. Sales is just a process, seven, seven or eight steps that are all very learnable. So those of you who might be afraid in your businesses to 
have that converse, that sales conversation or maybe a little hesitant, uh, definitely it's something that's uh, that's learnable. And as we talked about earlier, ask the combination. It's just ask ask the question that that you that you need to know to understand so that you can best serve your client. Um, I, I've talked to many people and they say, well, I don't want to sound salesy. Well, if you keep your conversation conversational, and you come at it as a deep need to help and assist somebody, it you'll never sound salesy. So there's four requirements before you're able to close the deal. It's what we call it the four green lights. It's um, you know, uh, uh, BANT is the um, uh, is the uh, uh, acronym that we use. The A means um, uh, the authority to make the to make the the uh, the purchase. Uh, N is for uh, there's got to be a need. T they, they have the time, and then uh, the B is for um, um, got to make sure that they are indeed uh, the buyer. So once we have those four things uh, in, in place, then um, we we have an opportunity to close, and most importantly, we have the time uh, opportunity to serve. Uh, serving is extremely important, um, particularly as we're, where we are in um, the sales sales arena or the state of business today, because we have uh, you know if you think about all of the online. Um, Client service or customer service tools, think Yelp, think uh, Google and those places where it's so, so, so simple to uh, uh, provide a, a review or, or a testimonial uh, about the service you receive from a particular company. In fact, it's, it's one of those unfortunate things, as we all know, it's, it's far easier to write a, a bad testimonial than it is to write a good one. So, um, in fact, I've, I've even heard or, or seen people, customers, who threatened their uh, their 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 um, their the person that they buy from with a bad um, you know, Yelp review or Google review if they if they didn't succumb to whatever their wishes and desires are. So uh, the ability to serve appropriately absolutely mission critical. And when you master that, that just opens the door for again re- repeat business from those existing customers. Which is always the most profitable business you'll ever you'll ever provide, and then of course it sets the stage for um, for for referrals. Okay. Stakeholders. So stakeholders think of the stakeholders as all of those people that are that are, are helping you to be a success. Um, for all but the few small number, of maybe one person or two person shops. Uh, business has has gotten to a point, a uh, level of complexity, that it's almost impossible for any of us to do this by ourselves. So in this section, we talk a little bit about um, best ways or how we should be thinking about how we bring people, other people under the tent with us to help us be successful. <laughs> Just as you're bringing people, bring people under your tent, um, in a perfect world, there will be other folks that find great value in what it is you provide and serve the community with, and they you you're, you know, they are part of your network uh, or ecosystem, and you're and you're part of theirs. So this level of complexity again, it's um, the the key or the big idea here is how do we create the uh, ultimate collaboration so that we as an ecosystem, we as a group of collaborators, we're sort of seamless to our customers. And that uh, we are, um, you know, operating like that fine-tuned symphonic orchestra, and we're just playing wonderful and beautiful music together. So uh, it it can happen. It does happen. I see it a lot, but it does it does take a little bit of uh, of effort. <laughs> so uh, in the stakeholder section, some of the, the the critical takeaways were, you know, as we're sort of uh, you know putting our 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 network together, our ecosystem together. It can also be very helpful to form what we call as a, as a mastermind group. And for those of you that are not familiar with that term, just think of a, 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 a handful of like-minded individuals that come together, uh, committed to one another's success, who, who get together periodically just to talk about uh, keys to success, offer up ideas and suggestions to, the, to, their, pe- to their peers. Um, I run a couple of different mastermind groups here in town, and uh, I will share with you, it is absolutely incredible some of the insights that they bring to, uh, to, to the meetings to share with one another 
and really advance their thinking about what's possible. So, um, so as a, and if you and if you're if, if a mastermind group doesn't work for you, um, I, I strongly encourage you to think about having a, a, a trusted business advisor in your network, whether it be a business coach like myself or somebody who's uh, kind of run the entrepreneurial wars and can help you peek around the corner and see when things are challenging and, and when you might want to try a different way. So as we leverage that mastermind group or are thinking about what's next or how, do, how we can continue to be a resource to our, uh, to our, our, our respective networks, you know, the, the, the possibility of how we ex- of exploring new markets or maybe even uh, the developing a new business model. So as I often share is that if you think of Amazon, eBay, Walmart, and the, and the Salvation Army, they are technically all in the same business. They're in some form of retail, right? But if you think about um, how they source their goods, or where, where is the stuff that they sell, where does it come from? And then the second part of the equation, which is the definition of business model, how do they get stuff from them into the hands of their ultimate customers? You, I think we'll all agree that they all, they, they all take a very, very, very different way of making that those those two critical processes happen. So when you think business model, it's how do you procure the stuff you're going to sell, and this is this is both product and service, and then how do you serve your customer? How do you get it in the hands of your customer? So just a, one of my favorite examples, if you just think about uh, Blockbuster and Netflix, as we all know, they were in the exact same business. What was the difference? Netflix chose to serve their customers differently than Blockbuster. And as they say, the rest is history. I mean, and it's almost just that simple. If you boil it all down, they chose to serve their clients, their customers, differently. So having worked with your mastermind group, explored new markets, and then and taking a look, we look at your business model, it may be time to pivot, or it may not be. Maybe what you've done pre-pandemic still works, still valid, still makes you and your organization relevant, or it may be time to make a change and pivot. And if the change, and whether you change, decide to pivot, do something different, or you decide to stay the course, there's no substitute for being extremely clear, clarity, about what it is you're t- attempting to do, because that level of clarity makes it easy for, for customers to do business with you because they know what you stand for and as importantly, for those of you who have employees, uh, what, what is the, always a question in a time like this that employees have for you? Where are we going? What are we going to do next? What does it mean for you, for, for me? Because everybody's favorite radio station is WIIFM, right? What's in it for me? So your ability as an owner leader to be, that, to, to be able to share that level of, um, of clarity uh, absolutely uh, uh, mission mission critical. Hey, Bobby, I'm going to take a quick break here. I, 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 somebody came in here with a um, question about mastermind groups. How do you go about forming one? So um, uh, great question. Mastermind f- uh, groups are formed in all shapes, sizes, and, you know, some, uh, some, rem- um, some remote. Um, some w- we're always remote. Uh, the, one, the one that I'm, I facilitate, it was um, – we started out meeting face to face, and just because of the conditions, we now are, we are now meeting remotely. And so, one of the things I'll just, I'll just tell you from my personal experience, you know, one of the things we've done, we've had a couple people who uh, were looking to either uh, buy, you know, either buy, uh, 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 perform a merger and acquisition transaction, uh, move into larger headquarters, and the uh, the information insights that were shared were a- absolutely in- incredible amongst uh, amongst the members. So we were able to kind of help people uh, 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 prevent them from making some bad decisions or, or, or not optimal decisions, while at the same time we were able to offer some of people some really good ideas on how to continue to grow their business. And, and this was well before um, the, the pandemic. But now as we um, move into the pandemic, uh, I was if you were to ask these people what, what it is they're getting out of, of, of our mastermind group, it's the uh, a shoulder uh, to, to lean on, somebody to uh, kind of um, commiserate with, but most importantly, somebody to bounce ideas off of as they uh, you know, plot their own plan, plan to thrive uh, after the pandemic. So uh, uh, and thanks for that question. 
And then uh, session number five, we talked about financial right sizing. And then this is one of those ch challenging areas. So uh, this is really about, you know, what is it, the, the metrics, the measures in our business that, uh, that, that make us go, that, that help us understand that we're doing the right things and hopefully for the, for the right reasons. But what we often see is people are, uh, business owners are uncomfortable with the parts. And uh, as I mentioned to you earlier, I, I advise uh, companies throughout the uh, this, uh, HCC business plan competition. And the, the consistent issue is um, people aren't comfortable with their, uh, the, the, as we build up sales and, and pro forma balance sheets and income statements, they're very, very uh, uncomfortable uh, with that. Now, I, 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 okay, in terms of transparency, I'm a recovering CPA, so that part of the business cycle doesn't scare me or bother me, and I've got some level of comfort. But I'm telling you, it's very, very, very interesting to see that if somebody, you know, for example, these people, you know, these 26 teams are all starting businesses or, or they're in, or in, in, in the, the early phases of a business, and they have this discomfort with the financial elements. And it's not just the finances. It's also tracking key elements of your business, what we call key performance indicators. And we'll, and we'll talk about that a little, a little bit more. But uh, that inability to track, so, you know, a year from now when you say, hey, how are things are going, how things are going, you know, we hear things like, well, I got, I got money in the bank, I got cash in the bank, so everything must be going okay. Now, that is one way to manage your business, but if that is the only financial metric that you're using to figure out if you're doing well, uh, you've got a huge opportunity uh, in, fr in, in front of you. So, there, you know, therein lies the challenge. And so why do we spend time on metrics and getting our, 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 our finances uh, in, in great shape? I mean, there's a million reasons, but the big thing is that we can get better outcomes. And with better outcomes, more opportunities, and if growth is something that we want to do, that, that, that becomes the fuel for growth. So as we talked about in this uh, financial right sizing in the time of the COVID pandemic, cash is king. you got to hold on to it. So if you haven't done so, we're going to strongly encourage you or people that you know that are in business to go back and find every way to hang on to every every nickel and dime they have until we have a little bit clearer way forward as to what the future brings. So as you do that, we, there's a concept called zero-based budgeting. For any of the, you that have done any sort of budgeting or sort of uh, any kind of business planning, uh, oftentimes when we go from year to year, we say, okay, we're going to take last year's number and add three percent or or or, or t or take away two percent, or or or, what, or whatever it is. Uh, at a time like this, absolutely not the best way to do it. So the concept of zero-based budgeting is we're we're going to assume that um, we don't have that expense at all. And if we had, and if we had to have it, you know, uh, what does that look like? Do we need to have it as much as we had in the past? Can we do give out a, a, a little more, a little less, or can we eliminate it altogether? So then as we talk about the new language, uh, we as business owners, as entrepreneurs need to speak, we need to speak the, the, the language of metrics and measures. And I talked about it a little bit uh, on the last slide when we talked about how uh, people have, uh, so many people have a, not a great understanding or grasp of the, the financials and the key metrics in their, in their business. So even though um, we're right in the middle of a pandemic and things aren't going the way we had hoped or the way we had planned for for 2020, um, we're still in business. Many of us are still in business. We still got to buy stuff to incorporate into our business so that we can um, service our customers. Um, because, um, but the thing, uh, we, the issue or concept we, we shared here is do you have to continue to buy in the future the way you bought in the past? So it's awesome. What, is, what does that mean? Um, how will you acquire stuff? you got really only two choices. You can either make it or you can buy it. So the make decision is um, I'm going to have my own bookkeeper in-house. I'm going to have my own IT team in-house. In I'm going to do my own digital marketing, you know, and, and the list goes on and on. So my question to you, if you think about those services and, and, and the, the literally dozens of other services that support your business, would you be better served? Uh, rather than trying to make it internally, but buying it on the open market. 
So you might, in theory, pay a little bit more, but the reality of it is if you make a good selection, the quality of what you've acquired it will be dramatically better than what you probably could have, could have uh, provided for internally uh, by yourself. And most importantly, uh, your time is freed up to focus on those things. Again, going back to the earlier slide, once you understand what your area of awesomeness is, by, by getting rid of some of these sort of mundane tasks, um, mundane but not fun tasks, it gives you the opportunity to spend time on what we call more strategic things. And again, we continue to have the mindset um, uh, discussion because everything that we've talked about here really goes back to what's kind of between our, respect, our two ears. How are we um, sort of um, successfully or optimistically uh, encountering or dealing with what's, 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 uh, what's, what's a, uh, ahead of us? And so uh, our session last week, and maybe, maybe some of you have seen this one, but this is the, kind of the four quadrants. And we often see this, these four quadrants in conjunction with maybe a time management seminar or maybe a business, some type of business success seminar and that sort of thing. So um, w simply what this states is, if you think about all the things that show up task-wise in our business on a day-to-day -day basis, it's some combination of urgent and important, not urgent, not important, quadrant two items, quadrant three, and then quadrant four. Uh, urgent and not important. So guess what falls into the not urgent and not important? Oh, hopefully I won't hurt anybody's feelings, but it's that watching of the mindless TV, uh, you know, being on the web, you know, um, and, and I fall in this too. So when, uh, when they say when you point the finger at somebody, you're, point, you're pointing four back at yourself. So I, I am guilty of, uh, of mindless uh, Internet web searches and that sort of thing. But if you look a little bit more closely at kind of what's in that uh, quadrant number two, you know, you see th those are all those things that, wow, and most of us will say, wow, that's uh, really important, but uh, just never got around to it, right? And then we'll, t we'll see further how, imp how important that can be. Because the urgent important, that's the ringing telephone or the upset customer that's, uh, that shows up at our doorstep and that sort of thing. So it's an urgent and we, and we can't deal with it. But then we also have the urgent and not important. So if, you, if anybody can remember the days when we used to work in, in, in real life office buildings with, uh, with our peers right next to us, yeah, um, so, some of us were unfortunate. We'd have people that would come, come uh, it, it was their mission to uh, interrupt us constantly, They'd call us, text us for whatever it is. But um, a lot of the things that they were sharing with us were, were not that important. So. We'll talk about that just a little. We'll, we'll, we'll revise, uh, summarize what we talked about in that, in that session as well. And so as a result of not really being focused on where it is we're headed, where we're trying to accomplish, you know, we'll never get there. You know, we're on this endless journey across the, sa the sands of time, um, never to reach our destination because it's not clear where we're headed or how we're, or how we're going to get there. So the key concept here is less is more. So if you if you if you looked at that grid at that four quadrant grid, there was all those tasks and activities. Then if you think about it, so hey, I really want to get focused on my business and started focusing on just what was in that quadrant two. That's why we get this picture. Instead of trying to focus on fifty or sixty different things, we're down to three, four, five things. And the whole concept of, of less is more. So in last week's sessions, we talked about the importance of a strategic plan. Again, that was right top of the list for those really important things that we never seen a, a chance to get around to. And then associated with that is goal setting, because out of a strategic plan, where we're headed, what we like to do, what we want our organization to be, how we will get there, we need to have some goals that get attached to that. Goals are so important because goals can be so motivating, not just to ourselves, but to the people around us. So, so let's just go back for a second. If we go back to our stakeholder group, and we were either in a, either in a, um, 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 a mastermind group or some other setting, and we said, hey, here are the five things that I'm working on this year. And if you were to say, I need your help, uh, I would be shocked if at least 90% of the people uh, <clears throat> didn't raise their hand and says, I'd love to help you. Because people want to help but they just don't know how to. So that's our job as leaders, as entrepreneurs. We've got to tell people how they can help us. And then right in that same, in that, in that same um, um, situation, 
It's the whole bit, the, the opportunity to create systems. Now, I assure you, none. Okay, I'm I'm the sick one here. Now, I really love strategic planning. I really love goal setting, um, but you know, the, all this stuff is um, is not that exciting. But it's absolutely so mission critical to your respective businesses. Because um, I mean, I mean, think about it. Um, let's just take a really simple example. Let's say you had a a ten person insurance uh, insurance agency, State Farm, All State, so on and so forth. If your customers called in, and what if somebody, if, if the person at the front desk or whoever, or whoever has the phone, it was just answered differently every time? You know, first of all, you as the owner would be very disappointed because you know that um, that phone call is a key element of your branding strategy. So if it's being answered differently, or and if it's being answered differently, that means it's probably more often than not being answered poorly. So that's just you know. So if if you think about if we all answered it the, the that phone the same way, what kinds of opportunities does that create for in this case our our insurance agency? So that thinking, that process, that approach, that just you know, um, runs through everything that you do as a as a business owner. And in fact, as 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 you either start your business, or continue to grow your business, your ability to create systems and processes that allow you to step away from the business and not be tethered to the, 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 the business itself, should you ever decide to, to sell your business, that will uh, bring you a lot more money than when um, a seller looks at a business and says, wow, Sally, you, you touch everything in this business. So if, if, when I, if I were to buy this business and you go away, what, what have I bought? So um, think about it for at least selfish or greedy reasons at, at, a, at a minimum, but creating systems, not a lot of fun, but can be a great way to, again, build value in your business. And, and one of the other hidden benefits, your people will love it because nobody wants to come to work and not knowing exactly what to do, how to do it, what's expected of them. As you build systems and processes and bring them into the creation and, of course, the execution, now they'll have an unbelievably good understanding of what's expected of them and what their role can be. And that's very, very settling for an employee group. Uh, one of those other things that we often neglect during times like this is our professional development. So um, I'll, just, I'll leave it at this, and this is the advice I got from my buddies when we were all playing uh, poker or, uh, pardon me, bridge together, and that's uh, uh, my billionaire buddies, Warren Buffett and, uh, and Bill Gates. Uh, Warren Buffett, I've heard him talk for 15, 15, 20 years, and one thing he consistently says, the best investment you can make is an investment in yourself. So he, you know, he 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 warns against debt and so on and so forth and all those other kind of things. But he is highly supportive if you've got to take on a little bit of debt to educate yourself because there's no other investment. Then Bill Gates, and of course Bill and Bill and and and, and Warren, they take turns being the richest person on the planet. But uh, something that Bill Gates has done, many of you probably know, but um, when he was at, at Microsoft and, and he still does it today, he'd take a week or two every six months. And he would just stack up, you know, hundreds of pieces of, of reading material and literature, and he would just consume it, and just read, read, read for two weeks, and then he'd come back, go to work, and then guess what? He was refreshed, and had lots of um, good ideas or things to get his people thinking about. So this whole concept, professional development, and and come on, guys, we we know right now it's easier than ever, right? Professional development, in most cases. Is just a uh, mouse click away on some online webinar or training class. And then the thing that all, all business owners are, are, are working towards or should be working towards is, uh, is better work-life balance. So because, I mean, we, we know our businesses are important, but they're not the end-all, be-all. And, and uh, for all of us, we do, there are, there are uh, other priorities in our lives that would be great if we could spend a little, little time with. So um, we're going to wrap up sort of the, the summary here. We're going to get into our, our new pieces today. But before, uh, and I'm sorry, this is the Business Resilience Workshop that goes along with this uh, the seven-part series that we just delivered. So I'll give you some information later on about if you're interested in sort of maybe doing a deeper, not sort of, but doing a definitely a deeper dive into these various areas and, and uh, really get a handle on how these things impact or how you can create opportunity for your enterprise. We're going to have a um, eight to ten sessions 
uh, workshop series that's going to start here. Prob well, it's probably not going to be late May. It's probably going to be early June. I just talked to the course creator, and where she's working diligently on pulling this together. So we'll give you some more information about that a little bit later. So again, here's the six that we've done, and, and our day today is uh, uh, we're going to be pulling it all together. Uh, but before we do that, so as, as I like said, I put, I put a nice red bow on uh, <laughs> on our series for you. But before we, um, uh, Riley, do you see anything in the uh, the chat box before we start moving forward? I know I've been kind of moving fast because we have a lot of information to cover, but I just want to see if there's, if there's anything that uh, we needed, any comments we needed to address. Austin, so I, you know, the comments were sent directly to you and I both, so I think you covered them uh, as you were talking. Okay. So good. I think we're pretty good. Um, at at this time, you know, we've got we've got some time here. Uh, there are some participants on the call. Welcome any one of you to unmute yourself and ask questions directly or have a conversation with Austin directly. Um, don't have to worry about the chat box. If you don't have it, just unmute yourself and ask away. Uh, a recording of this session will be available later uh, on hccs.edu slash smallbusiness. Um, and it's, it's also on a playlist in YouTube so uh, we're, we're working on getting the one or two of, of the seven still kind of cleaned up, uh, but the other ones have already been posted. So uh, if you've missed any of them, you know, they're, they're going to be they're posted on YouTube. And um, you can certainly catch up on any one of those. But go ahead. Uh, anyone, if you, if you like, unmute your mic. Um, let me just make sure you can. Confirmation. Okay, so did, uh, uh, you can mute yourself again if you, if you don't intend to share. But I guess I should double check, and because I'm. I will have everyone to be unmuted here, Austin. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.
to capture new opportunities. Opportunity to capture new opportunities. Boy, that, I, I, Robbie, I got to work on my wording on it. That one's that one's a little uh, a little a little kludgy. But anyway, my point is, there's going to be so many. I mean, I mean, I mean, think about it. Here's a great one right now. So, um, in the last six weeks, many of us have become Zoom experts, right? So, Zoom has probably grown their business 20 to 30 to X in the last, you know, four or five months, right? And so now, you know, nobody, guess what? Uh, two months ago, nobody cared about the lack of security protocols on the Zoom platform. Now it's, it's, it's a big issue. It just didn't exist. Nobody cared two months ago. So I say that half, in joking, half jokingly, but what else are you running into out there in the marketplace or as you endeavor to service your clients? Or, or maybe identify new clients and what some new needs might be, where you could create, you could uh, identify some new opportunities for your company or firm because of, of the of the of the new situation. But the important thing is our ability to prioritize, because the the, the reality of it is, and I'm guilty of this, probably like no other, is that uh, we can't run at 10, 15, 20 different opportunities uh, all at once. So as like my buddy Jack Pound said in City Slickers. You got to find one thing and do that one thing very, very well. And that's kind of the cornerstone for uh, success. So, what's the big idea? Ideas are cheap, execution is everything. Um, I th- I'm sure we all know people in our careers. And um, I see this guy in the, in the mirror some mornings when I'm shaving, but just, I mean, just generating idea, this, that. Um, per, you know, continually fiddling with something and perfecting it to the point that nothing tangible ever gets done. So how do we fix that? How do we address that? So, again, pulling it all together. So it's five key principles. Ruthless focus. Uh, I'm not sure who's more focused, either the, uh, the attacker or the prey, but uh, I assure you, these guys are not, well, I was going to say that they're not worried about what's for dinner tonight. Now, that, that lion is, but that's, uh, the prey is not. They're not worried about who emailed them or who's texted them, that sort of thing. They've got unbelievable focus, one on trying to uh, track down the prey and the other one uh, getting away. So how do you bring that to your business, your, your enterprise? Then we talk about the Parthenon of improvement. So th- think about it this way. Every, this is why being focused is so important. Because every time you make a change, let's say, to your business model, there's this ripple effect that happens inside your environment. So we talk about the Parthenon, roughly structures. It's been standing for about 5,000 years or so. It's been, um, there's been fires, pestilence, uh, wars, and fought, and it still stands. So these, the way it was constructed, these 160 pillars, Create the strength for this to stand through all through the through the through the various millennium, but think about it. Your business is the same way. Every business either has or has to provide for sales, marketing, operations, uh, admin systems. Think HR, finance, accounting, so on and so forth. So every time you change your business model or change something that's particularly client facing, it has a ripple effect inside your organization. So, um, you know, we oftentimes see uh, organizations who have great technology or a great idea, but they just can't make uh, traction in the marketplace. And it's often because the change is coming so fast that the, 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 the pillars that support the business can't maintain pace with the things that are happening uh, in the front office or out, out in the marketplace. So this is why I say let's focus. Uh, and focus. So rather than the 20 opportunities, pick two. And we'll talk about Two, two examples as we uh, uh, as we finish out today. So rather than 20, pick two. So let's just take an example. Let's say your organization, as you kind of as you as you're accelerating out of the pandemic, uh, let's say you're a, a, a computer shop or a, a computer repair firm, and what you're looking for is new customers and new technicians, uh, uh, which which is a very fair uh, request for those two organizations. I've had a couple of clients in that, and that's those are the two things that they struggle with most technicians, and, uh, and clients. So there's this concept of act on lead measures. So, Austin, what are these lead measures you're talking about? We, we all kind of know what, what lag measures are, you know, how much revenue I did last year, sales last year, 
what was my profit last year, how many people left my organization last year. Those were called lag measures. But lead measures are the things that we can do um, in between our measurement periods to uh, help evaluate or create some success to know if we're heading in the right direction. So if, um, now the reality of it is new customers don't show up. The reality of when you work a sales process is you uh, do some amount of prospecting, uh, bring, uh, turn, so you're turning your leads into prospects, and prospects through a nurturing process, they, they ultimately, in a, in a perfect world, they become customers. So leading indicators or measures, for that would be how many outbound prospecting calls are we making? Are, are we having network meetings? And when we go to those network meetings, more specifically, what are the goals in terms of who we're going to meet, how many people we're going to meet, those sorts of things, and then uh, referral inquiries to customers. So those would be examples of leading the case. As with the technician, um, you know, things may have changed a little bit because now we're at a 20% unemployment rate as opposed to the 3.9% that we or th under 4% we were just a few short weeks ago. But, you know, uh, you might think about, you know, are we placing ads? Um, are we searching the job boards? And then are we going to associations where our, our target uh, uh, technician employees hang out? You know, principle number three is the power of scorecards. See, this, what I love about this, in one place I know exactly what's going on. Does anybody here enjoy going to professional sporting activities and, and, and they never look at the scoreboard or they, or they, keep, their, their, they keep their eyes on the, uh, eyes shut so they don't see the scoreboard? Absolutely not. We all want to know where you know where our team is or where our team is relative to the other team, and that's why scorecards work in sports and they work even better in business. So if you look at this one, I mean, you got the speed of the it's a baseball game, obviously, speed of the game. What's the count on there? How many outs? Uh, who's up? Home team's up. You know, here's the score and um, you know, how many hits? How many errors? Seventeen hits versus nine. Well, these guys are on fire. But the beauty of that, for just you know, taking a, a four second look. At that scoreboard, it just, scoreboard it just tells you you know uh, tons and tons of information about what about what's going on. So if, you know I see my guys throwing at a, a, 102 miles an hour. Boy, we, he, uh, what do they say in baseball? He's got some good stuff uh, uh, going for him. So we can say, wow, this 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 process is in good shape. Uh, on to the next one. Let me let me go find another area to uh, to focus on. So my defense is doing well because I've had zero errors. So this is a really, you know, again, four or five seconds, and we've got a really good handle on, 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 uh, on what's, what's going on. And this works in your business as well. In fact, it works better in your business. Uh, we're going to talk about, you know, again, measurement and key, key performance indicators, KPIs. Okay. And so as we go about endeavor to measure, this is, this is what I'm talking about this, you know, in our organization. In fact, I just had this conversation with a client earlier today. Um, he just he was, um, was challenged a little bit by how he's, he's sharing good ideas with his people, but nothing's happening. And so what we're working on right now as we speak is how do we create metrics that matter and to create that scoreboard. So here's the expectation. Um, these aren't his numbers, but... If, if we were serious about our search for new customers and our new technician, technician search, here's how we would set a goal. 15 calls per day per person or, who, or whoever's, going to be, whoever's going to be helping us with the sales process, number of network meetings per week, per day, same with the technician search. What are the activities we're engaged in? Not just what activities, but how frequently or, or, or the quantity that's expected. So you map, map your goal, and then at the end of the, the, the measurement period, you, you uh, calculate, your, your, calculate your actual that would uh, ultimately end up on a scoreboard work one day. So for any of you who worked in environments where you had this level of granularity when it came to measuring, um, I know it works because I've done it in other places, and it absolutely works. And, and I, my secret is the reason why it works is because nobody wants to be in last place, and once you publicly share this information, um, people that are in last place, one or two things will happen. They'll either get dramatically better or they'll leave and go, and go somewhere else. The other big deal is accountability. I like this. Hello, I'm accountable. And that's what's missing probably in 95% of our organizations. Um, I've been in many places and asked about what's going on particular, around a particular process or activity, and oftentimes the, the leader or owner will make an excuse for the employee. 
So in a, in a great system of accountability, it's, se it's several things. It's, uh, first of all, it's got to be a company mindset that we all are, are all accountable uh, to, to, to one another. The systems and structures that we talked about earlier, a great um, component of a, of a functioning system of accountability. It's got to be personal accountability, frequent, you know, team, uh, team accountability, the frequency, how often do we get together to discuss where we're going, where we're headed, how we're doing, uh, who's falling behind, who's ahead, how do we learn from one, one another? Again, all elements of an accountability system. And number five is the game plan. So, again, for the last seven weeks, we've shared a lot of information, and I've been too happy to share, and then and today we kind of pulled it all together. So my, my encouragement to you is to, again, not boil the ocean, but to take a handful of the things that you've learned here, been exposed to here, and create a game plan. Um, if, if it was me, I would just kind of focus on, on today's session as a great way to, just to get started. Again, don't, uh, let's, let's identify two or three things uh, uh, that, uh, that will have a great impact on your business, and let's get started around putting some, some action plans together and, um, and getting our people or, or our teams engaged to make that happen. So as we get to the end here, because I wouldn't feel good if I ended this series and didn't have a bonus for you, and I'm about to lay some unbelievable knowledge on you, and this is the key to all success from my buddy, Tony Robbins. Action, and I, I adjust that to massive action, uh, is the most important key to any success. So as I said earlier, we can sit around, we can talk um, about a plan, we can think about a plan, we can even write out a plan. But if that plan never sees the light of day, it was uh, absolutely, I'm going to say it was time wasted, but um, we're, we're never going to achieve the success we hope for because it's, you know, um, business is a contact sport. We've got to get out there, we've got to get dirty and make stuff happen. So I want to thank you today. Um, if there's any takeaways, I'd love to hear you know one or two comments from, from those of you that have participated in other uh, of the, in the series or, or at least this one. You know, what are your one or two takeaways uh, for today? Um, as promised, uh, again, there's there's the workshop, there's the syllabus for that. We're working on that. That'll probably launch late um, er, in early June. And here's the contact information for the HCC. Okay, we have HCC Corporate College. They're the ones that are going to be, uh, I'll be working in conjunction with them to deliver this. There's their uh, email address and their, their phone number. If you call them, they're, they're in a position to take your name, and they'll notify you once we get all the dates and all that other, other stuff uh, squared away. So, um, okay. And then there's my contact information. I'm happy to, to be a resource to anybody that's here on the call. If you want to get together for a 20-minute complimentary uh, consultation, happy to jump on the phone, or if there's something that came up today that you're, you didn't feel comfortable putting into the chat box or coming off mute to share, uh, I'm happy to have a discussion with you. Um, i got to tell you, it's just an honor to be attached to uh, HCC and their entrepreneurial initiatives. Um, they're consistently regarded as uh, one of the top in the country when it comes to supporting the, the entrepreneurial community. And Lord knows we get our opportunities when you think about where we've been with uh, Harvey, um, now the oil and gas situation, and, and now the pandemic. So, uh, Robbie, were there any uh, comments in the, um, in, the, uh, in, the, in the chat box in regards to key takeaways? Hey, Austin. So um, th there were some comments, but I'm going to, in the interest of time, you know, we need to wrap this up. Yes. And the recording is going to be made available. Thank you so much for sharing your your uh, phone number and your email address, uh, and uh, I love the bonus you gave. Uh, I wish you give out more bonuses. This, that that was perfect. We'll um, we'll, action, we'll, action we'll, we'll take you that next go round, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. But thank you so much. Uh, we will wrap this up, and I'll stop the recording here, and we'll end this session. Um, but uh, once again, Austin, I want to thank you from HCC, uh, and also for myself. Uh, uh, I've learned a lot just by listening here, and uh, you've got a tremendous amount of experience, uh, your presentations and your uh, ability to, to just put that complicated task and break it down for us. It's fantastic. So I, I give you, you know, kudos to you for, for all you do and uh, in mentoring the, the crowd and the small business crowd. 
And I look forward, uh, I'm hoping to see you on, on campus again when, when we finally o- reopen. Or, or, uh, <laughs> yeah, one day, one day. Robbie, I, I want to thank you for supporting uh, me through this series as well. And I want to thank our guest today. Thank you for taking uh, spending your lunch hour uh, with us. Hopefully it was uh, w- well worth your time. And, and even though you didn't share with me in the chat room, I'm hoping there were a few takeaways <laughs> that you'll be able to use either as you uh, continue to uh, grow your business or think as you ponder starting a new business. So uh, uh, you can find me at the, at the information below, but um, have a great rest of the week, and have an enjoyable uh, Memorial Day. Um, so, um, yeah, yeah, please yeah. take a moment to recognize those with, who have uh, uh, enabled our freedom. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Take care. Bye, everybody. Mm-hmm.